video, we're going to talk about properties of logarithms. So there are three basic properties, and each property has what we call a condensing and an expanding um, way to use it. So we're going to go over each of the three properties on how to condense and how to expand. The first property has to deal with exponents. So when you have an exponent, you can bring it in front of the logarithm. So I have two examples written down for you. If we look here, let's do our, we'll do our work here in orange so it kind of stands out. So the rule says when you have an exponent here, you're going to bring it down out in front of your logarithm. So log of x squared becomes 2 times the log of x. Um, we can do the same thing over here. So even if you have a different base, remember here the base is 10. It doesn't matter if you have a different base and it also doesn't matter if you have a number. The property of the exponent still remains the same. So this one says log base two of four to the third power. So I take this three because it's my exponent and I bring it down out in front. So this becomes three times log base two of four. Um, you can even take this a step further and you can simplify log base 2 of 4 because this is saying 2 to the what power is equal to 4. So 2 to the what power is equal to 4. I know 2 squared is equal to 4. So this becomes 3 times 2 or 6 is your final answer. Okay. When we're doing this, we are expanding. When we have our exponent um up there and we are moving it out in front, that is called expanding. So let's do some condensing where we have a number out in front and now we're going to move it up into the exponent. So the rule also works backwards. So if I have a number out in front here, I can say, well, I need to condense this logarithm. I need to make it smaller. So this is gonna now come up into the spot on my exponent. This is gonna become the log of x raised to the fifth power. The same thing works when you have a different base other than 10, and it also works with fractions. If I have a number out in front here, I can raise this up here to this power. So this becomes log base 5 to the 125 to the 1 half power. And if you remember, 125, if you have anything to the 1 half, that's the same as the square root. So I would write this final as log base 5, the square root of 125. That is called condensing. So we can either take our exponent and we can bring it down out in front by expanding, or we can take our number out in front and we can bring it up to the exponent and that is called condensing. That's the property of exponents. The next property of logarithms is when you're adding logarithms together. So if I have logarithms with like bases, which means these numbers right here have to be the same, um, I can combine them together by multiplying. So log of 7 plus log of 3 is equal to the log of 7 times 3. And you would actually multiply that out. So you would write this as the log and 7 times 3 is 21. Um, and we just leave our final answer like that because we cannot simplify this anymore. 10 because this is a log base 10, 10 to the sum what power is equal to 21. Well, we don't know that off the top of our head. So that would be some sort of decimal that we would just use the calculator for. So when I have two bases that are the same, I'm just going to multiply these numbers. And sometimes they're letters. I'm just going to multiply them. And that is called condensing with addition. I can also do expanding. I can go in the opposite direction. If I have two things that are multiplied together, I can separate it out. I can expand it using addition. So this would say I would take the log of 4 and I'm adding to it the log of x. And you might be asking yourself, okay, I mean, why do I un even have to understand how to do this? Um, when we get into the next part about how to solve a logarithm, Remember, the goal is to get your variable on a side by itself. So depending on the problem that you're given, sometimes you're going to have to condense it, and sometimes you're going to have to expand it in order to isolate the variable. So we have to go over all the properties, all the rules on how we can manipulate a logarithm. Um, the last one has to do with subtracting. 
When you are subtracting logs with the like bases, you can combine it with division. So um, I'm going to start off with expanding. You'll notice that I have some division here already. And when I have division, I can say I'm going to always subtract and I subtract my top minus my bottom. So whatever number I have on the top minus the log of whatever number I have on the bottom. I think we should do another example of that. So if I had log, um, we can make this a little bit harder of P over Q. I say, well, I'm going to take the log of my top, which is P, minus the log of my bottom, which is Q. And that's how I expand it. Again, it doesn't matter what my base is, as long as my bases are the same. And when, I, and when I'm expanding, my bases are going to be the same when I'm writing them out. I can also do condensing. When I have subtraction here, um, I'm going to condense this, and I'm going to say it's the log. My base is the same, and I take my first number, goes on the top, and my second number goes on the bottom. Um, so then I can actually simplify this. 8 divided by 4 is 2. And this is a logarithm that I can actually solve. This is asking me 2 to the what power is equal to 2. And I know that here x is equal to 1. That's my final answer. Lastly, we're going to combine it all together. Um, here's a problem where we're going to be using expanding that has all three rules. So First thing I'm going to notice is that I have a 3 here. I'm going to take this 3 and I'm going to move it out in front like this. So this becomes 3 times a log of x times y divided by z. I moved my exponent down. Now I notice that on the top here I have multiplication. Oops, you can't see that color very good. Let me try it with a lighter one. On the top here I have multiplication, and then I also have a division. So I'm usually combining them all together. So if I deal with, I can deal with it all at the same time. When I'm multiplying, I add. So this becomes log of x plus log of y. But then I'm dividing by z, so I'm going to subtract my z. And it all has the 3 out in front because my 3 was raised to the entire group. So this right here would be my final answer. If you have any questions, let me know.